Welcome back to Steel and Vance. Axe the tax. It's happening on April Fool's Day. People are going crazy over the carbon tax. I was going crazy driving down Oak Street and seeing this at the gas pumps. I was like, oh my gosh. And they're saying that that could go as high as 220 yeah. by the summer. Yeah. And then we're going to increase the carbon tax in BC April 1st. So I know it. the carbon tax isn't fully responsible for that gigantic number. Yeah. There's 8,000 other taxes that are doing that. But a lot of people are going, mm -hmm. And Pierre Polyev is doing this, and oh, there's all kinds of things. So let's bring in Shachi Carroll, who is the president of the Angus Reed Institute. And I don't, I don't have to don't, do this, do I? Uh, right? No. Because you, you did. guys did a really I fascinating did it anyway. poll, and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Uh, what did you find? Are Canadians on board with Pierre Polyev going, Axe that tax? So a funny thing happened on the way to the Axe the Tax campaign rally. Okay. We're starting to actually see two things happening at the same time. And, and I know we don't do well in politics or media or, or spin with like cognitive dissonance, yeah. but, but follow me on this journey, it's like, your brains okay. won't break. On one hand, there's still a significant amount, uh, like the majority of Canadians who continue to say, look, from an affordability perspective, from a rebate perspective, from um, whether or not we see the tax as effective in actually reducing greenhouse gas emissions, all of those things, there's, there's increasingly more Canadians lining up on that. Ha, huh, we're not so sure to down with this tax. Like mm -hmm. that's where they're going. On the way there, however, you're also starting to see this little mini rally of left of center voters who are now all like, no, increase the tax. Conservatives want to ax it. Let's just, <laughs> let's drive it up because it, the, the politics of it, it's like, oh yeah, you know, pick your camp, hold my, hold, hold my, my beer. alcoholic beer. <laughs> Like, I don't know, hold my my sustainably produced beer, whatever it is. Um, so we're, we're seeing two of those things happening at the same time. And re really important to remember that the data that I am referencing has more to do with, with the federal carbon tax, yes. right. which doesn't apply in British Columbia. But British Columbians in, in our polling did weigh in on their own provincial carbon tax and same issues. So when you look at the politics of it, Two things are happening. You've still got a majority who say reduce or abolish this tax altogether. But you also have almost the same number who say increase it or maintain it where it is. And then it's the political divide. I mean, look at that. Look at that right there. If you're a conservative voter, three quarters say <laughs> ax the tax. Liberal voters, NDP voters, BQ voters are all like, no, nah, increase it or maintain it where it is. Don't lower it. Don't cancel it. Now, here's the thing. That left of center vote, that liberal NDP BQ vote, it's shrinking. So mm. on one hand, like they're, they're prepared to show up and fight for this tax. On the other hand, there's fewer of them to do it. So Because we saw the yeah. prime minister talking about it today yeah. when speaking to a completely different subject matter mm -hmm. at his media availability yeah. that was an announcement, a re-announcement of an announcement, yeah. announcement, something like that. But he took a moment and said the conservatives are lying to Canadians mm -hmm. about the carbon the, ca the rebate. carbon mm -hmm. rebate. The rebate. And, Whatever and, they've relabeled it. And that's yeah. the thing. It's like we're we're all inside the spin machine. Because mm -hmm. I think most Canadians would agree that something must be done about what we're seeing in terms of climate emergency. The change is here. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like? And is this the best path to that? So it's really interesting because a lot of economists, even right of center economists will say, if there's a tax, it should be a consumer tax because it's it's a tax that technically people have a choice around right. because it's your you're choosing to spend the money on gasoline. Well, tell anybody yeah. who doesn't live in in a downtown core with a great transit system, and by the way, transit fees across the country up. are also going up. The impact of the pandemic, less ridership, people not wanting to come in back to the office, all of those things. You know, people are still having to drive around in in cars cars that require petroleum. I mean, yeah. that's the reality of it. So in terms of the, the lies, like the spin wars are pretty full on because you will hear the Liberal government saying four in five households. OK, that's four in five households eligible mm -hmm. for the federal carbon rebate. So that nets out BC. Nobody BC, in BC, none, none of us. Now, and some yeah. people in BC get a provincial rebate, but of course that threshold is a lot, it's a lot lower. lower. So yeah, 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 exactly. So 
Uh, that nets out BC for that federal rebate, that nets out Quebec, because Quebec's doing its own, own thing, thing as right. well. Yeah. So then you're left with the rest of the provinces, and then you're left with those who are eligible. Again, means tested, income tested. So four out of five of those households may well be, but do you see how, like, this is math. Yeah. Like, the Starts base just smaller. gets smaller and smaller and smaller. This many of this many. And in the meantime, uh, this has, you know, the Conservatives have really seized on this as their key election issue. It's all about affordability and pocketbook, pocketbook issues. Mm -hmm. And you saw that back and forth in the House between mm -hmm. oh, yeah. the Prime Minister and the Conservative mm -hmm. leader. I mean, listen to this. Watch this. An election on the price on pollution? We had three, Mr. Speaker, and we won them all. Then he shouldn't be afraid to have one more. <laughs> okay, so Pierre Polyev is going to be in BC next week holding mm -hmm. some rallies, ask the tax. Mm -hmm. This is bad news not only for, you know, our Prime Minister, but also for our Premier, David Eby, because Polyev is going at him saying, I want you to ask your tax mm -hmm. April 1st, too. Mm -hmm. How dangerous is this? We're going into a provincial election. Who knows when the federal election is? Mm -hmm. So a couple things. First of all, at some point it really does become for any standing politician in the face of increasing um, skepticism or outright opposition around something like a carbon tax. It, you know, at some point these, these decision makers need to ask themselves about the art of the possible. What do I have to do to keep people on side? Do I need to freeze it temporarily? Do I need to do something like that? Now, they're loath to do it full stop. They're also loath to pull that trigger too quickly mm -hmm. because you do it and it looks like and then nobody and then no, well but more than that nobody remembers come election time right. so if we that. see that happen you gotta pull that lever later mm -hmm. when people are gonna remember it interesting do you think that's why the prime minister is sort of giving out all his election uh, budget goodies Little early cookies. saying oh now there's gonna be some measures for renters and all for those young people who are suffering with the um you know, cost of living. With the whole cost of living. Yeah. The suffering Just with, being. All, with all the money. <laughs> with all the beings. Yeah, with all the money. Um, so what they learned uh, coming out of the carbon tax, because for a while you just saw this liberal government in a state of like stasis, total paralysis politically, like don't know what to do. What they realized was not having good branding around the rebate, around awareness of the rebate was really hurting them. What we're also seeing is actually there is more awareness of the rebate and more awareness of the fact that people are receiving it. That number's actually gone up. So it is proving a little bit effective to sort of remind people, hey, here's what, you're do what we're doing with your money. Now, again, the question becomes, are we at a place where people have just closed their listening ears, they've crossed their arms and they're just going, we don't care anymore. Yeah. Or is it going to move the needle? And at, you know, at the almost 10 year mark of a government, that closed ear factor, I think, is, is one that gets harder and harder to overcome. But never say never. Because we were the early adopters, were we not here in BC, of a carbon tax, right? And having it, do you call it net neutral? I'm not sure of the terminology. Revenue neutral. Revenue neutral, yeah. thank you. And then that changed with a change of government. So it was more like, is this going into general revenue? Like, where is this going? Like, if you're taking money mm. out of off my dinner table, I'd like to know where it's going so that I might agree with where it lands. So again, a lot of that is the communications. Yeah. And that's incumbent on the premier. And so just a couple things to, to, to remind all of us Please. of. You know, these the carbon tax federally and the carbon tax in British Columbia were brought in as signature pieces of policy and legislation on the grounds of it's the right thing to do come on do it for the planet do it for the kids it's all okay and remember when we when it came in at the end of the 2000s hey those were salad days in bc in terms of revenue in terms of the economy yeah. everything was cooking with gas you weren't in a cost of living crisis in the same way and again think back to, to justin trudeau he was like the young guy climate change was like the number one issue in the country 40 percent of canadians at that time um saying that they cared about it it's not that we don't care about it anymore but you know in in the priority ladder in the priority pyramid there are other things that are taking precedence at yep. the moment but the well politicians said. have not necessarily pivoted their their communication around well we're doing this because it's the right thing i mean that's great but you might want to also acknowledge to voters like even if it's a sacrifice even if it hurts right now like stick with it it's for the best we're not hearing any of that no. and 
I, I do find that curious from a political communication standpoint. Your poll was fascinating, and this is going to be a very contentious and fascinating lead up to a provincial election and a federal election. And the carbon tax is going to be the center. I'm tired already. The center. I know. Can I just, can I just, can I just, can I just like, can I just like pull the blanket over my head? Wake me up. We need you. Thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having Shanti me. Shanti Curl is the president of the Angus Reid Institute. Now, trust me, if you're looking for something to make you feel good in these stressful times, we have it for you in our happy endings. And up next, millions of Canadians have macular degeneration. This is the leading cause of vision loss in people over the age of 50. There's no cure, but there is a way to reduce the risk. And we've got details next. Let's get to our viewing party brought to you by the BC Restaurant and Food Services Association. In the draw is Laura in Pitt Meadows. Hello With there. Her cat, Laurie in Pender Harbor is also watching. Hi, Lori. Bridget in Campbell River. Hi, Bridget. And Margaret and Diana, thank you all for watching. Get in on the fun by taking a picture of you watching us right now and send it to viewingparty at checkmedia.ca.